A few days ago, I uploaded a detailed video on Drock OS, and almost 90% of you loved it. But some of you requested the 64-bit version, because the 32-bit one wasn't working properly. You were facing black screens or kernel-related issues. So, I thought, why not create a more detailed video on Drock OS? One that supports multiple kernels and can be installed on any processor, whether it's Intel or AMD. Sounds good? Then let's dive right in. So first of all, you need to download this zip file. The download link is available on my website. If you face any issues with downloading, you can check out the video given in the description. Once downloaded, you need to extract this zip file. The file is around 2 GB in size, so it might take a little time. After that, in the next step, you need to install Disk Genius. You will find the setup file in the folder from where you need to launch it. Then, just like you install PC software, you will need to install it as well. After installation, go back to the same folder and copy the files from there. Make sure to select the files according to your system's architecture. After that, you need to open the main directory of Disk Genius and paste the copied files there. Replace any existing files if prompted. Now, simply launch it. After that, you need to select any partition. Keep in mind that the partition you select must be completely empty, and your system should have at least 20 GB of free space to run this OS smoothly. Next, you need to select EXT4 as the partition system and leave the volume label empty. Then, click the Format button, and your partition will be formatted in just a few seconds. Once the partition is formatted, you need to open it and create a new folder. Name this folder in a specific way and make sure there are no spelling mistakes, as even a small spelling mistake could lead to a boot error. After that, inside this folder, create another new folder and name it data. After that, you need to go back to the same folder you extracted earlier. There, you will find the Drock OSISO file, which you also need to extract. Once the extraction is complete, Copy all the files from there and drag and drop them into Disk Genius. This will begin the file copying process. Then, return to the same folder again, and you'll find a boot file there. This file is extremely important. Most users who face boot-related errors usually have issues due to this file. So, make sure to drag and drop this boot file into Disk Genius as well. Next, go to the kernel folder, where you'll find a zip file. You need to extract this one too. These files are very important. Because if one kernel doesn't work on your system, you can switch to the other available kernels. After that, you need to open the Grub to win. Then click on Manage Boot Menu. After that, click on Add New Entry, and from the drop-down menu, select Submenu. Next, in the Title section, type Drock OS Version 2. Then click on Edit Custom Code and open the Grub Code file that you downloaded earlier. Copy all the visible text from that file and paste it into the Custom Code section. Once that's done, click the Save button and then choose the Apply option. And with that, everything is done. Now I'll restart the PC and record the rest of the process using a hand cam. As soon as the PC restarts, the Grub menu will appear in front of you. If it doesn't show up, it means that the secure boot option in your BIOS is enabled, which prevents Grub from working. So, you'll need to disable secure boot from the BIOS settings. Once you scroll down a bit in the Grub menu, you'll see several kernel versions listed. The first one is the default kernel. But if that doesn't work for your system, you can try using the other kernels. Just remember, you need to choose the kernel according to your PC specs. Since I'm using a 2N generation processor, I'll go with the option that suits that. Now the booting process has started, and when you boot for the first time, it may take a little longer. The OS has now successfully launched, and before I give you an overview of it, let me first run Free Fire for you just to save your time and show you how well it works. That's why I had already downloaded the Free Fire APK in advance, and now I'll go ahead and install it. The installation is complete, and now I'll simply open the key mapper, select Free Fire, and launch it. As you can see, I've reached the login page, so I'll quickly log in using a guest account and show you the gameplay directly. As you can see, the game has launched successfully and is running very smoothly. I'm getting around 30 FPS, which is more than enough to play comfortably. I've also configured the key mapping settings, and they're working perfectly too. 
Overall, this is a great OS, and you should definitely try it out if you're thinking about playing Free Fire. Also, I've made a detailed video on the 32-bit version of this OS, you can check it out by clicking on this tutorial here. Besides that, I've also shown how to compress Free Fire graphics in this video, which you can watch by clicking on the left tutorial. And yes, I'll see you there. Bye.